Hey, you're listening to Smashing Pillars. I'm Samuel here in Houston, Texas, and thank you for taking time to listen to another message here, another episode. And uh, this is actually the continuation of the message that I shared about maybe three weeks ago, titled Bad Company Ruins Good Morals. And I'm going to title this one, Bad Company Ruins Good Morals, Wrong Associations Bring Witchcraft Attacks. Okay. And um, because that's really what uh, what I, I felt like the Lord was saying to focus on um, that witchcraft, you know, hanging out with people who are unbelievers and believers. Unfortunately, you have believers in the church that practice witchcraft and they think it's okay. Uh, but when you associate, when you align yourself with these these people, knowing, knowingly align yourself with them, you may not be practicing witchcraft. You may have no desire, but as you continue to align yourself with people like that, eventually it will bring ruin into your life. Okay, and so we're just gonna pick up where we left off last that last time that last message. So again, let me just go ahead and. Uh, start up let's open with prayer and um yeah let's do that so father we just give you glory and honor and praise abba lord thank you for this day thank you for the opportunity to to share your word again lord with people my brothers my sisters that are listening or watching god i thank you for their precious souls lord i rejoice over their lives and lord i thank you that you're waking people up to the fact that the misfortune in their life, the constant issues in their life are not normal. And that it it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual attack. And Lord, I thank you that you're, not only are you waking your people up to that, that you're also equipping them to overcome the works of the devil. So God, I pray right now that you would, that your presence your glory, your anointing would be poured out on upon every person that listens to this message. I pray also, Lord, that you would uh, release warring angels to war on their behalf and to keep them from being distracted, offended, attacked in any kind of way, spiritually or, you know, relationally, you know, issues in the house all of a sudden. God, I pray that nothing would break down while they're listening to this message, which is often the case with some people. God, I thank you for doing all these things in Jesus' mighty name and that you would be glorified and lifted up or that you would be seen moving strong upon your people's behalf, Lord. And uh, and I thank you for doing it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. All right. So, like I said, last year, last year, yeah, it seems so long ago. Um, last, uh, about two, three weeks ago, let's see, I'll tell you the date, the exact date. That was on April 20th. Okay, April 20th. So, yeah, two weeks ago. Um, I shared this message, and I started out with the scripture, 1 Corinthians fifteen thirty three. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Um, another verse that I also started out with was second Corinthians six fourteen through 16. Do not be equally unequally yoked with unbelievers. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness. What accord has Christ with Belial or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? Okay. And uh, some of the things that we touched on in the previous message was, you know, how do you know when the, somebody is sent into your life by the devil? Okay. You might feel strong feelings of uneasiness. You, you know, you know that you're, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong person. Okay. Sometimes what it's often called is a check in your spirit. You ever been around someone, you just get a check in their spirit every time you're around them. Don't, don't ignore that. Okay. 
Don't ignore that. Um, another person, you know, to avoid are, are those with a religious spirit. I'm talking about they're legalistic and they're sin conscious and fire and brimstone. That's all they are. Sin conscious, fire and brimstone. Any little thing you do or say, they'll tell you, oh, scripture says this, scripture says that. That's a religious spirit, okay? It's a demonic spirit, actually. And uh, you have to be, you have to be uh, careful around those kind of people, okay? They can influence you, and you, you, you could actually become just like them. Don't think that it's not possible, because it is very possible, because they usually have an appearance of godliness, they usually have an appearance of being anointed and prophetic and all those kind of things, but it's all a counterfeit, all right? So you want to spend as little time as possible with people like that. If it's somebody in church, you know, just limit your time around them. And, um, yeah, so you want to be careful with that. Um, there are some people who carry this witchcraft presence on them, okay? Okay. Uh, what I mean by that is there's something about them that you can't put your finger on, but there's this presence on them. And usually somebody like that is going to be very interested in, um, I don't know, things like, um, your life, your life, especially if there's, if there are downfalls, if you're going through bad things in your life, you know, they want to know what you're going through and, uh, they'll pretend to be very concerned and they'll pretend to uh, want to be there to help you. And, uh, but they want to know all, every little detail. They need to know everything. You need to be careful with people like that. Okay. Now I have friends that are sensitive to the spirit of God. And they'll call me sometimes, you know, it's not often, but I get called every once in a while and they'll say, Hey, you know, I just feel like, you know, maybe you're, you just need prayer or something. I don't know. You've been on my heart. Um, and I'll either say, uh, well, no, not really. Or yeah, you know, I'm real busy right now. I'm kind of a little overwhelmed. Please pray for me. Uh, something like that is, is okay. That's okay. But if somebody calls and says, Oh man, Man, I feel like you're really going through it. You know, I want you to know I'm here for you. I know I want you to know that you can tell me anything. You can tell me your deepest, darkest secrets, and nobody will ever know. Run from that person, brother, sister. Don't fall for it, okay? Uh, deep down inside, they hate you. They really do. A person like that really hates you. And every information, all information that you divulge to them, they will use as a weapon against you at a later time. You ever meet somebody that for the first time you think they're so nice. It could be at work. It could be at church, whatever, wherever. But you just meet them for the first time and you just click, man. It's like you've always known them. You've known them for years, like you grew up together. You ever meet someone like that? No, I have on more than one occasion. And have you found yourself just telling them all your about all your life, all your personal problems, everything? Things you've done, things that you might, you know, I mean, you just tell them everything that's going on in your life. And then you walk away and say, man, I don't even know that person's last name. Why don't I just tell them all that stuff? And then, well, that person tends to almost like spiritually stalk you. They don't care about you. They don't want to help you. They want to see you fail. Well, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Um, so. You know, be careful on how you share your problems and who you share your problems with, because not everybody cares for your good. Another person uh, is, you know, if a person's operating in that spirit, they tend to intimidate, right? Uh, they also they're very mysterious. They hate God. And I'll touch on these in a little bit, a little bit more in a second, but uh, they teach unscriptural passages. Okay. Things that the, the scriptures clearly say are forbidden, they will teach that it's okay. And they'll twist the scriptures and and if they're really good. They'll convince you that it's okay. Um, 
they'll give you things for protection. They'll give you, you know, what what I would call an ambulant or talisman. But they'll say, oh, hey, this is anointed. This was in, this belonged to so-and-so preacher hundreds of years ago. Keep it in your house and you'll be protected. No, don't do that. Um, never allow a person like that to give you anything to swallow or consume. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right, so uh, they or or they tend to like dark themes. Okay, there's something not right with this picture. You have somebody in church, supposedly is very anointed, very sensitive to the spirit, prophesies, falls out, gets touched by the Holy Spirit, gets drunk in the Holy Ghost is what they'll call it, to the point where they have to be carried out of the church and put in a car and driven home. But all they like is watching movies about vampires, zombies. Uh, they tend to have a potty mouth outside of the church. Um, they compromise a lot. Okay, that's a person to, you know, distance yourself from. All right. So those are some of the things we learned in the first in the first uh, lesson. I'm going to continue from there, but I want to talk a little bit about how the Bible's clear. So, I mean, I just read that passage out of 2 Corinthians uh, 6, 14 through 16, and that the Bible is clear about associating with unbelievers, okay? But when you're dealing with people who operate in witchcraft, you will eventually be attacked by witchcraft, or you will be enticed to practice witchcraft yourself. Don't think it's not possible. The scripture clearly says when you think you stand, you are already on your way down. Don't be fooled. The Bible contains several verses, um... You know, that address witchcraft, sorcery, and the practice of magic, to name a few anyway. Now, these these verses, uh, you know, they take a negative view of such passages, considering them incompatible with the worship of God and often condemning them. Let me give you a few. Leviticus 19, verse 31. Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritualists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. I mean, that doesn't get more clear. I mean, you can't get clearer than that. Okay? Don't don't mess with the mediums. Don't mess with the spiritualists. Uh, for my Latino, you know, brothers and sisters out there, don't go to the curanderas. Don't get your tarjetas read. All that stuff. Don't go there. Don't go there. Stop reading the horoscope. Okay? Stop getting your palms read. Stop lighting candles to certain sta- saints and all those kind of things because you will be defiled by them. All right, Leviticus 20, verse 6. I will set my face against anyone who turns to mediums and spiritualists to prostitute themselves by following them. I will cut them off from their people. Okay. First Samuel. You know, I'll give you, I, I can just, let me see. How can I share this? Uh, I have someone, I know somebody who actually... Someone that I know, it's kind of almost consider them family. They practice. They they say they're a Christian. They speak Christianese. But they practice Jezebelian, Leviathan practices. Just say it like that. And you know what? They've they've been cut off from their entire family. And you know how God, you know, God says here, I'll cut you off from your people. Well, you know, here's what, what happened. This, this person has become so prideful and so arrogant, thinking that they're really spiritual, but they're so prideful and so arrogant. They've incorporated all these other practices into their Christian belief that they've driven everyone uh, in their life away from them. They've, they themselves have cut themselves off from their people. Um, another one, second Samuel 15 verse 23 for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as is as iniquity and idolatry because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He also has rejected you. And then Deuteronomy 18 verses, uh, let's see, 19 through 14. When you come into the land, which your, the Lord, your, the Lord, your God is giving you. You shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. 
or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritualist, or one who calls up the dead. That's a necromancer. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God, for these nations which you will dispossess listened uh, to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. Okay. So, there it is. All right. The nations before that you will dispossess, that's what they practice, soothsaying, divination, witchcraft but god has not called you to those things see all of those things um divination witchcraft sorcery black magic all of those things are counterfeits of the gifts that god has given his people you don't need that stuff the devil's already defeated why would you want to be filled with the spirit of the devil a, a, a defeated spirit why would you want that no, you want to be filled with the spirit of God, the spirit of life, the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that created everything that could ever be created. That's the spirit you want to be filled with. So, you know, I just kind of as a side note, I want to say this to to those of you who, you know, you 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 know, maybe you practice witchcraft, maybe you walked in the real deal. OK, witchcraft, you know how to get it done. You know how to make things happen. You know how to make people disappear. Okay. But now you got saved. Now, there are witches, warlocks that go into churches and they have these uh, salvation experiences, but it's all an act so that they can get in, embed themselves, and just cause destruction and chaos in people's lives. But they're still, they're just wolves in sheep's clothing. Now, there are those that practice those things and they get saved they they really do have some kind of a experience maybe sorta <laughs> but okay they will con they will continue using the vehicles that they used in the past to get their divine information and they will try to convince you that god has cleansed those gifts and he now uses them for his glory like Tarot cards, Ouija boards, uh, casting stones, all those things. I mean, it, it's it's prevalent in the church. Whether you believe it or not, I'm not going to name churches. You can go, go Google it yourself and find out. Google destiny cards or angel boards. There's even a board now that's a Ouija board, but it's called the Holy Spirit board. Now you can communicate directly with the Holy Spirit. You know, I mean, I don't understand how the Holy Spirit can live inside you and you can't communicate with them. But now you can because you got this board and um, it's crazy. I mean, they'll say like, okay, the angel board is a board that it's a Ouija board, but it's disguised to be what they call an angel board saying that this gives you direct communication with your guardian angel that was assigned to you at birth. And this board, you need it so that you can communicate with your guardian angel. The question was posed, how do you know? And uh, the response was, well, because the information that comes through this board comes from the third heaven, not the second heaven. My my question would be, how do you know? Right. So don't think that you can use tarot cards and call them destiny cards or use a Ouija board, but call it an angel board. Now, God has cleansed it. Crystals, stones, all that kind of stuff, because God's not going to do that. Look, Deuteronomy 12. 29 and 32 when the Lord your God cuts off from before you the nations which you go to dispossess and you dispossess them in the in and dwell in their land take heed for yourself that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you and that you do not inquire after their gods, saying how did these nations serve their gods I also will do likewise you shall not worship the Lord your God in that way. Okay? See? Right there. You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way. 
for every abomination to the Lord, which he hates, they have done to their gods. For they burn even their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. Whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to it, nor take away from it. All right? So it's pretty clear there. You can't add to it. You can't say, well, God now uses this. He's cleansed it. No, the only thing that God's going to cleanse is you. You're the vessel he's going to cleanse so that he can pour himself out through you. All right? Why would you want to use tarot cards? I mean, destiny cards to give a word to somebody when you can just the you can just get a word of knowledge or word of wisdom from the Holy Spirit and that who's resides should be residing in you and give it to that person. Okay. All right. So what is witchcraft? All right. So generally, you know, witchcraft, I'm going to talk a little bit about witchcraft just so get you give you an idea of where we're headed here. Uh, it often refers to the practice of using and manipulating supernatural or magical powers, often with the intention of influencing events or people. Okay. Witchcraft typically involves practices that are perceived as supernatural or beyond the realm of uh, ordinary human abilities, I guess you could say. Uh, these practices may include casting spells, forming rituals, divination, uh, maybe even communing with the spirits, the spirits or deities. Uh, witchcraft often revolves around the use of magic to achieve specific goals or outcomes. These goals can be both positive and negative, ranging from healing and protection to causing harm and or seeking, you know, like personal gain, even taking somebody's life. And, and I've seen it. I've seen it happen. All, all of it, all of the above. Uh, various religious or spiritual frameworks can have witchcraft within their practice. Okay. Like, well, so some denominations all right, so uh, some practitioners view it as a religious belief system, while others see it as a form of spirituality. For example, Wicca is a modern pagan religion that incorporates witchcraft as a central element. Many traditions of witchcraft incorporate knowledge of herbs, plants, natural remedies for healing and other purposes. Herbalism and folk medicine are often intertwined with witchcraft practices. As such, witches in certain cultures we're seen as healers due to this knowledge. Now, let me just stop here real quick and say something about this. So when it comes to essential oils and and natural remedies, you know, remedies that were passed down by your grandma, or your grandpa, things like that for different purposes. Some some Christians go to the extreme and say it's all witchcraft. You can't do any of that stuff. OK. Um, others go a little too far and they do end up, um, you know, entwining witchcraft practices and what they think is just natural, you know, uh, herbs and things like that. Okay. Always keep this in mind. Whatever the devil is using these things for is a counterfeit of what God meant them to be for. Okay. Just think of that. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with using essential oils. My personal belief here, okay. Um, you know, for uh, sore joints, a cough, things like that. You can. There's different purposes for essential oils. But when you start to use essential oils and diffuse them for things like peace and joy and serenity and um, you know, focus, all those kind of things. Now that, now you're crossing a line there. Okay. Those, those, you know, you should, you should be flowing in the gifts of the spirit. You should be walking in the fruit of the spirit, producing the fruit of the spirit. Okay. But when you start using things like that for those kind of purposes, now you're crossing a line. All right. So just, all right, let me move on. Uh, you know, so you have modern expressions of witchcraft. Okay. So contemporary witchcraft often referred to as modern witchcraft or neo-paganism encompasses a diverse and evolving array of spiritual and magical practices. It's just a big goulash, okay? While it draws inspiration from historical witchcraft traditions, it is a distinct movement that has gained popularity since the mid, yeah, about the mid-20th century. 
Um, one of the most well-known and influential branches of contemporary witchcraft is Wicca. I just mentioned that a little earlier. Developed by uh, Gerald Gardner in the mid-20th uh, century, Wicca is a nature-based, polytheistic, and uh, initiat initiatory religious tradition. Okay. Wiccans worship a goddess and God, celebrate seasonal festivals such as uh, Samhain and Beltane, and follow a moral code called the Wiccan Reed, which emphasizes basically harm no one. Okay, it's white magic, is what they'll say. It's it's a, it's good magic. Black magic is bad magic. All of it is bad. Okay, <laughs> newsflash, right? Uh, rituals, spells, magic are integral to Wiccan practices. Okay. Many contemporary witches adopt an eclectic approach to their practice, drawing from a variety of sources, traditions, and belief systems. Eclectic witches often celebrate personalized rituals and spell work, combining elements of different paths that resonate with them. In other words, it's their truth. Uh, this flexibility allows for a highly in individualized practice. In other words, rebellion. Uh, you know, I don't take, you know, I follow no one. All right, so some witches prefer to practice alone as solitary witches. They may develop their own rituals, work independently with deities, uh, spirits, or even natural forces. In other words, the elements. Uh, solitary witchcraft can be highly introspective and focused on self-discovery. All right. So you kind of get the idea. Okay. Um, let me just say something about Wicca. They'll say, oh, it's not witchcraft. It's we don't even worship. A, a, some some Wiccans will say we don't even worship we worship nature. We, we worship mother earth. Um, but that's not true. That's far from the truth. Okay. And, um, Wicca is witchcraft. If you're practicing Wicca, you are operating in witchcraft and it is only to your own demise. Eventually, eventually to your own demise. Okay. If I were you, I would lay it down and, 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 you know, return to God or, or turn to God for the first time and seriously seek out deliverance and, and, and salvation. Okay. So, um, many, um, I guess we'll, we'll continue calling contemporary witches, uh, modern day witches, uh, particularly feminist witches, focus on the divine feminine and goddess worship. They view the goddess uh, as a symbol of empowerment and reclaim feminine spirituality. You see a lot of this, especially with the celebrities, pop stars and like Madonna and Rihanna and uh, Beyonce and all those uh, people. All right. Goddess-centered witchcraft often explores themes of female empowerment, gender equality, and social justice. Let me say that again. Goddess-centered witchcraft often explores themes of female empowerment, gender equality, and social justice. So when you have Christians, and you see them all the time, saying they're Christians, but they're advocating for female empowerment, gender equality, and social justice, that should raise a flag, okay? Uh, another, th another form of witchcraft is called kitchen witchcraft, which centers on everyday activities such as cooking, gardening, herbalism. You know, the practitioners of this, uh, craft, uh, they believe that, uh, these domestic activities can be infused with magical intent and spiritual significance. Kitchen witches often work with herbs, oils, natural ingredients to create potions, teas, and spells. Now, if you often work with herbs, oils, and natural ingredients, it's probably, for most people, called cooking dinner <laughs> or breakfast or lunch. 
But if you're working with herbs, oils, and natural ingredients to create potions, teas, and spells, you've crossed the line. Witchcraft is now also being blended with technology, electromagnetic witchcraft, techno sorcery, to name a few. And uh, there, are, there are several teachings on my uh, channel uh, on that subject. You can go check them out for yourself. But the, those that, that practice kitchen witchcraft, um, in other words, they like to cook a lot and bring you food all the time. I'd be very careful about eating something from someone you don't know very well. Okay. All right. So let me just talk a little bit about the, uh, a little more about the history of witchcraft. So one of the most notorious periods in the history of witchcraft occurred during the late Middle Ages and the early modern period in Europe. The witch hunts of the 15th to the 18th centuries were marked by widespread accusations, trials, persecutions of individuals, mostly women accused of practicing witchcraft. These persecutions were driven by a combination of religious, social, and political factors. Church authorities and secular governments viewed witchcraft as heretical and dangerous, a dangerous threat to Christianity and social order. Uh, I agree. Thousands of individuals uh, were subjected to torture and execution during this dark period. And despite the persecution, witchcraft persisted in various forms. You have folk healers, uh, cunning folk midwives continued to practice healing and divination often blending christian prayers with the traditional folk magic uh, grimoire books of magic and spells became popular in the modern early modern period um yeah so christian prayers blended with traditional folk magic that's i hear prayers like that from time to time different Pagan practices have entered Christianity. So true. When Christianity engages culture and begins to convert men and women to Jesus, most people groups have developed some supernatural traditions and polytheistic beliefs. And it is complex to filter dangerous ideas out of a culture through a Christian lens. This has had various degrees of success and we see some witchcraft or other versions of pagan beliefs encroaching upon the church and Christianity. So true. Okay, so what are some of the signs indicating witchcraft activities targeting you in your life? Uh, one thing is mysterious illnesses. Okay. Your doctors, you know, doctors aren't able to diagnose um and leaving your doctors confused, you know, I heard a doctor tell someone, I don't even know what else to do for you anymore. I was there in that meeting. Uh, some doctors are even, you know, willing to try unnecessary treatments that could actually harm the patient. People do get sick naturally. Don't get me wrong. We do get sick naturally. But when you go to a doctor several times, sometimes several doctors, and none of them can find something wrong, not even medicine helps, you still feel ill. These are called afflictions. Okay, Think about Job. Remember, Satan struck Job with diseases, illnesses, causing him immense pain. Job wasn't immune. Neither are we. You know, um, he lost his all his possessions. He lost his family, all his children. He lost all his wealth. He lost all his health. The devil attacked his character. Um, you know, you can read all that in Job, the first two chapters of Job. And the devil wants to drain you of all your financial resources. Your finances will be drained going from hospital to hospital, not to mention your will to live. You know, um, you will. Things keep breaking down. You, you hear people say this, man, if it's not one thing, it's another I can never get ahead. All right. That's if that's the norm in your life, that's not normal. And you're probably dealing with a witchcraft attack. More than likely you are. Uh, another thing is you no longer have passion. Maybe you dreamed of becoming a doctor all your life since you were a little kid. You dreamed. You studied. You sacrificed. But then one day you woke up and 
I don't know. You didn't want to you even question if you're supposed to be a doctor now all of a sudden. You no longer felt you no longer feel the passion to become a doctor even though you're close to accomplishing your dream. Graduation is within sight. And all of a sudden you feel like, no, I'm not supposed to do this. That's a sure sign of witchcraft activity in your life. Okay. Witchcraft activity is why so many promising young people have forgotten their dreams to becoming something in life. And instead of dropping out and they're, instead they're dropping out of college and they decide to start partying, doing all kinds of other things. Maybe they were once uh, top in their class. But their grades suddenly dropped to failing. Someone you knew would be a doctor. Somebody you knew was going to become somebody one day in life. A doctor, a lawyer, something suddenly drops out. Begins partying and selling drugs. This is not normal. This person was targeted. You need to know that. And if you're struggling with stuff like that, you're being targeted. Something else to look uh, at is extreme isolation. Which is usually a sign of witchcraft activity in your life. You're feeling all alone, even when surrounded by people. You have extreme anger and agitation for no reason. People, you know, when you hear yourself saying things like this, because I hear this from people, some of my own friends, I just hate people. I can't stand people. People are so stupid. Can't stand to be around stupid people. Okay. Whether you realize it or not, you're, you're under the influence of witchcraft. When you start thinking that way. And the purpose of that witchcraft attack. Well, why would that be witchcraft? Why would somebody want me to not like people? To isolate you. To isolate you. And ultimately it is to get you to not like God. Okay. The primary goal. Again. Of witchcraft attacks. Is to isolate you from others. Isolation can put you in the dark. Lonely place. Giving the devil opportunity to oppress, depress you, even put suicidal thoughts in your mind. You know, witchcraft wants you to despise. It wants to it wants you to despise and to drive away people from you. The very people who could offer you help and support are the very ones you tend to reject for some reason or be offended, and you don't even know why you're offended. Isolation is not normal. Now, I get it. Sometimes God will set us apart for a season. That's different. Okay. You can be set apart and not isolated. Okay. Let me say that again. You can be set apart by God, but not isolated from people. Um, you know, remember, we're, we're created as humans. We're created to thrive on associations and relational connections. Witchcraft pulls you away from human interaction. Hating, you know, being around people when you have no reason to be or to hate being around people could be a sign of witchcraft. You're, being, you're under a witchcraft attack. Something else to look for is financial difficulties. This, this is a sign of, if it's a constant thing, it, can, it is more than likely a sign of witchcraft attack. You work hard. Um... You put in a lot of overtime. It seems like you're always working, but you can never seem to get ahead financially. You work day, you work nights, whatever, day and night. You still, your bills are piling up. Your paycheck is gone as fast as you get it sometimes the same day. Or how about this? You making, you're making plenty of money, but for some reason, every time you get paid, something comes over you and you blow all your money and you never really pay your bills and you just continue to do this over and over again it's like something comes over you you mismanage your money and then you're struggling to meet your bills that's a witchcraft attack whether you realize it or not you might think oh i'm just being uh i'm just not a good steward no if this is a recurring thing yeah you, you you're dealing with something spiritual Something else to look for is you hate spiritual activities. You know, I had a conversation with someone not too long ago. I know I should go to church. I just don't like being around people. I just hate being around people. I feel uncomfortable. All, all those kind of things. And that person doesn't even realize that they're under a witchcraft attack. 
They think that that's just how they feel. You once loved God, but now you have an immense hatred of God, maybe, and things of God. Maybe you have an unnatural fear of God. I know a lot of people like that. Unnatural fear of God. You hate going to church or being around other believers because you think they're all fake. Everybody's fake. Everyone's a hypocrite. Or you hate reading the Bible or you just can't seem to make yourself read it as if something is preventing you. Maybe you begin to hear profanities in your head when you try to read the Bible. Maybe every time you try to read the Bible, you get real sleepy. This is a sign of witchcraft. There's something that's called near success syndrome, which is very, it's common for many people. Okay. You work, you work hard on, on goal, a goal for months could be a sales, trying to close a big sales, get a contract sign, could be anything, but you work, you work on that, you, you know, for months, maybe even years, you're still close to achieving it, but then it slips right through your fingers. You had a very promising job interview. Maybe you were even told at the end of that interview, the job is yours. We'll call you back and give you a starting date and, um, and when to come in and we can you know, offer a formal proposal to you. But the job is yours. You're walking. I mean, I would. I'd walk out of there walking on, you know, walking in the clouds, right? Praising God. But you know what? The call never comes. And this happens, if this happens over and over, this happens to you repeatedly, you're in a witchcraft attack. It may be time to consider you're dealing with something spiritual and attack it with prayers. Or how about this? You, you're, you're out of a job. Maybe you're at a job. Maybe you're at a job where you're being just mistreated. You feel like you, you, you just are being mistreated. You're not recognized you know for what you're contributing you know to the team that you work with whatever the case may be and uh or you get fired or you just walk off the job and you're believing god for a job and you're not able to find one when you finally get one it's a job that's better than what you had last time and um better benefits better pay better everything and you know God gave you this job. In fact, you testify and you tell everyone, God gave me this job. God said this. God said that. Uh, this job is where I'm going to stay until I retire. Whatever it could be. I've heard many different things. Okay, I've even said that myself in some jobs in the past. All right. And then time goes by. Sometimes it could be just a few months for some people. Sometimes for some people, it's just a couple of weeks. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I've had some calls from some people saying, hey, pray for me because I'm about to quit my job and I, I need God. I believe in God to open a door for me. And I'm always, you know, surprised, you know, and I kind of I'll ask, oh, wow. So did God tell you to leave? No, no, but I don't like the way they're treating me or they're racist or whatever the case may be. Okay, but that's what I'm at. That's not what I asked you. I am asking you, did God tell you he's released you? Well, no. Okay, well, you you testified from the mountaintops that God gave you this job. If he gave you the job, you probably shouldn't leave. But they leave anyway. Then they get another job. It's the same thing. Oh, man, God gave me this job. This is it. This is the one. And then they quit again and they're believing for a new job. That's a witchcraft attack, whether you realize it or not. Okay? And a lot of times it will use what I want to touch on next is extreme hatred from others. You know, it's a common indication people, you know, is is people suddenly they start treating you differently. Right? You got this new job. I'm going to just, because I was talking about a job, but say you got a new job. Everybody loves you. Everybody loves you. You're a nice guy, you're a nice woman, girl, whatever. You got the presence of the Lord is all over you. They see a light in your eyes and all those things. And everybody just loves you. And you just, you're like a breath of fresh air. And then all of a sudden, those same people start treating you differently. You you, you might even feel that something's, something's different, something's changed. But you don't know really what it could be. 
some, you know, something is causing you to experience extreme hatred from others. Even people you've always got along with. All right. So when when the hatred you experience is disproportioned, it's disproportionate to um, any wrongdoing. That's when you need to start paying attention. You know, you you do something, you make some subtle, I mean, something really small mistake that actually you can correct right there on the spot. But that person just is livid towards you, is complaining and talking about you, slandering you, making a big deal out of it. That's extreme hatred for no reason at all. That's witchcraft. People are being turned against you. Okay. Road rage. You don't realize you've may have been you may have been perceived that maybe you you cut somebody off, but you didn't realize that you cut them off. Or maybe they just for whatever reason they just they start to, you know, stalk you or somebody, you know, following you around, trying to run you off the road for something you didn't even know you did. That's extreme hatred. It's unnatural and more than likely is a witchcraft attack. You know, it's easy to dismiss as just a bad day. You know, that, you know, you might say, well, Samuel, you know, everybody has a bad day. But not when every day is bad or every other day is bad. Or when it becomes the norm. This is just the life that I've been dealt. This is the card. The, this is the hand I was dealt. And the Lord is getting glory because I'm suffering for him. No, you're under witchcraft attack. You need to pay attention. You know, the devil will place a mark on you if you'll let him. He will mark you. To isolate you by hating people and causing people to hate you. You see how that works? Uh, another thing, too, is constant nightmares. Sometimes even dream sorcery, you know, sleep paralysis, night terrors, causes, you know, sleep uh, deprivation, wants to make sure that you stay awake at night. You can't stay asleep. You ever hear somebody complaining, I, I woke up every hour of the night. I'm just tired. I don't know why. I even took a sleep aid and I wasn't able to stay asleep. That's witchcraft. Okay. They're trying to wear you out, trying to make you tired, foggy minded, forgetfulness, cause mistakes, you know, cause issues in your life that way. Uh, another thing to look for is family dysfunction or disorder in the family. You ever experience that you like you and your family, you, you plan a, a, a weekend Maybe out camping, maybe a mini vacation. You've been excited about it. You've been talking about it, you know, just stirring each other up about it. And uh, maybe just the day before or the, the day of the family getting together. All of a sudden, arguments, fighting, offenses. Plans sometimes even get canceled. Nobody wants to go. That's, that's an attack, whether you realize it or not. You come home from work excited. You know, you're excited. You want to get home. You want to spend, you're going to spend time with your family, maybe your kids. But as soon as you get there, all chaos, it's just chaos breaks out. Children start misbehaving. Your spouse keeps picking fights with you for no reason. You know, it's like something's trying to tear your family apart. The attacks, you know, may have started with you, but now the attacks seem to be extending to your family. Do not just sit down and do nothing. Take a stand in prayer. Defeat the enemy attacking your family. Prayer is the answer to everything. Uh, something else. Uh, extreme lack of favor. Things just never seem to go your way. Something always holds you back from getting ahead. People always promise to help, but suddenly they change their minds. They promise to help you. You know, I had a guy who... Um, had people, you know, offering to help him financially get a car because his car broke down. And uh, and then they would change their mind. It wasn't just one time. It happened with several different people. Well, that's when that person should have said, hey, you know, this has got to be a witchcraft attack. And, uh, and, and we prayed about that. And so, but extreme lack of favor, okay, you could be engaged even, married, uh, to be married, 
But then all of a sudden, your fiancé calls off the wedding. A lot of times, witches will do that. They will enter into a relationship. They will gain the heart of that man. It can happen the other way around, too. A lot of times, it's women, though. But men operate in this as well. But they gain. They get that man to where he is so in love and, you know, and then all of a sudden they just pull away and cause trauma, deep trauma, brokenheartedness, even suicide maybe. And, you know, that's that's one way that they gain more power and they drain that person of their their essence. But, you know, that's another message there. But, yeah, you, it's an extreme lack of favor. OK. Also, constantly being shamed or embarrassed. OK. Humiliated. You know, m- manipulation, that's one of the major components of witchcraft. And that is to to shame, embarrass, humiliate, humiliate, humiliation. All of these are used to control and manipulate you into doing something you normally wouldn't do. Witchcraft tries to make you do it. Control you. Maybe you, things like, okay, these are probably things you never, never even thought about. Um Every time you go out with your friends or you go out on a, maybe it's a, you're entertaining customers, go out for some food and drinks. Or, you, you know, when I worked at waste management, you know, I was required to entertain all my customers once I became a major account manager. And we had venues at all, uh, suites at all the venues. And, you know, I could schedule, you know, the suite anytime I could reserve it and take up to, I don't know, 18 or 22 of my customers i can't remember i think it was like 18 everything was provided for them the tickets to the game um the food i mean just five star buffet open bar anything you want as much as you want and i never really indulged in any of that the the drinking and all that but the food yeah (laughs) yes the food yes for sure I'd be telling you a story and um, if I said I did not. But let's say you, you know, you have something like that and you go out and you drank so much that you got, you passed out. Can you imagine? This is, this is, these are your customers. Okay. Or you're hanging out with your friends. And every time y'all go out, you get drunk, so drunk that you pass out and they have to, you know, carry you into the car, put you in the back seat, drive you home, take you into your house, put you to bed. And you do this over and over and over and you promise you're not going to do it ever again. That's a witchcraft attack. Uh, Or you constantly do things in public that embarrass yourself. You embarrass yourself over and over for some reason. You just don't understand why you keep doing these things. You need to start looking at the spiritual side of that. One more, okay, so, and there are a lot, I could go on and on and on, but I'm, let me just touch on one more. Uh, items, okay, things frequently missing or lost. Let's say you're about to leave your house for an important meeting. You have documents you need to take with you. And now you can't find the folder, but if you find the folder, now you can't find your keys, your car keys. Your car keys are always hanging on uh, the key holder in the kitchen, wherever it is. You put them all, it's always the same. I'm a creature of habit. Most people are. When I walk in the door of my house, I throw my keys on this key holder. I, I, I can't miss it. It's right in front of me as I'm walking past it. I just throw my keys there. There's no other place in the house for those keys or, or where those keys should be except on that key holder. Um, every once in a while, I may forget to put them there. I'm in a hurry or something. The next place that I would look for them is upstairs on my desk because the first thing I do after I walk in the house is I go upstairs to my office and I empty my pockets out on my desk. So it's going to be in either two places. Well, let's say you're going out to a meeting. You got an important meeting. You're cutting it close, but you're going to make it on time. Now you can't find the folder of all the documents that you prepared the night before. It's a green folder and everything in the office is tan and you can't find the green folder for some reason you don't know where it's at 
And if you did find it, you can't find your keys now. Uh, you miss the meeting. You miss a job uh, interview. Whatever it is, and you lose out on an opportunity, right? Or you get fired or something from your job. Whatever the case may be. And then after all the destruction has happened, has been has been done, suddenly the things that were missing suddenly appear. Maybe in another part of the house. Uh, how about this? You left your house for an appointment. You're going somewhere. Maybe you're just going to go to the store. And all of a sudden you forget, man, did I turn the, the stove off? Did I turn the curling iron off? For those of you who curl your hair, women. But did I turn this off? Did I turn that off? And it just, you can't, you got to turn around and come back to the house and check. Or... Um, Maybe you're you you know you're in bed, you you've gone to bed for the night, and you normally you before like when I go to bed before I go to bed I always go walk my dogs for the last time and then I lock the doors as they come in I lock the doors and go upstairs. Well, whatever your ritual is in your home, you 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 lock your doors and all that. You go to bed. You're in bed. You're about to fall asleep, and all of a sudden you're like, man, did I lock the door? I don't know if I don't remember if I locked the door and you get up and you go down to lock, check the door and it's locked. It's always locked when you go check. That's, that's witchcraft. That's witchcraft. Okay. Um, maybe, you know, well, those, that's, those are some examples there for you. Okay. This is, this is not a simple case of, forgetfulness or absent-mindedness it's witchcraft i know what i'm telling you and if you start to pray against that break those assignments against your mind you will see a difference you will see that hey there is something supernatural taking place here all right so some of the things that you can do to protect yourself from witchcraft okay samuel you tell me all this stuff but what, what can i do right clearly the practice of manipulating the spiritual realm through witchcraft is completely against the worship of god because when you do that, you're showing who, which God you're loyal to. If you're going to walk in in the in the in righteousness, you're showing you're loyal to Yahweh. But if you're going to walk in witchcraft and all that, you're showing you're loyal, your loyalty to whatever devil or demon you're praying to. That's being prayed to. And Jesus said, right, because we're all trees. You're going to either be a tree of life or you're going to be a tree of knowledge and good and evil. You will know them by their fruit, is what Jesus said. So, you know, the story of the Old Testament and the New Testament is not about sin. It's mentioned, sin is there, but it's more about loyalty. Which God are you serving? And then walk in the ways of that God. To show your loyalty. And it's going to be evident. By your actions. Or the fruit in your life. For Christians today though. How are you supposed to avoid. These kinds of serious issues. Well something you need to do is. You need to know the word. You need to be grounded in it. You can't be ignorant of what the Bible says. About witchcraft and idolatry. And you need to not be lackadaisical about it. And ah well it's you know regularly reading and studying the scriptures will help you understand God's will and identify teachings that align with his word and that do not align with his word. You know, friendship with like-minded believers is very important. You need to surround yourself with fellow believers who share your commitment to Christian values. Engaging in a supportive Christian community can help you strengthen your faith and provide guidance in you know, making righteous choices. Now, you can do that in church. You can, you can do that, in, in, but you can also do that outside of church. You know, you can have friends that don't go to your church as long as they're Christians. You can hang out with people like that. There's nothing wrong with that. They got to be like-minded believers. Something else you need to do is pray for God to give you discernment and pay attention to those checks that you get in your spirit about people. 
You know, but prayer is a powerful tool for seeking God's guidance and discerning his will. Pray for wisdom, discern discernment of spirits to recognize when we face we're faced with ungodly ideas and practices. Sometimes people may tell you, "Hey, here look what the Bible says right here," but for some reason you feel like that's not what that really means. I just don't feel that that means that. Well, that's probably witchcraft. You want to reject divination and occult practices outright. If you used to, you know, practice that stuff and you still have some of those tools, the cards, boards, candles, talisman, lucky charms, um, all that stuff. Don't sell it. No matter how expensive it is, you need to burn it. If it's not good for you, it's not good for anyone else. If you sell that stuff, the money you got is defiled. Burn the money then. Okay? But it's not good for anyone else to have it. So, clearly, avoid any form of divination, fortune-telling, occult practices that claim to provide hidden knowledge or power. That takes you right back to what I was telling you earlier. These destiny cards and angel boards and holy spirit boards that's that's just pure divination fortune telling and occult practices right in your face okay our prayers are not magic spells when you pray you're appealing to god for him to work you know your actions and your words have power only in obedience to his spirit not out of some formula system formulaic system you, you that's the only time your words are going to have power are when they align with god's will got to remember that be cautious of popular culture be mindful of cultural trends in media that promote occult themes and glamorize practices associated with witchcraft you could i could go on and on and on of all the shows that that are showing right now they're they're on netflix and Tubi and Hulu and I don't know all those other I don't watch television so um, very rarely may I watch something but um, it's nothing but witchcraft that's why because everything is all satanic demonic um, exercise discernment when choosing books movies or entertainment that may challenge your faith very important to educate yourself Take the time to educate yourself about different belief systems and practices, including those related to witchcraft, contrasting them with the truth of Christ. Understanding the beliefs and motivations behind such practices better equip you to recognize and avoid them. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest that you go to uh, a witchcraft store, bookstore, and buy books from some witches or warlocks. But there are uh, several good ministries out right now that teach on this stuff. And you can, you can through those ministries, you can learn about the other side, the dark side. Okay. But don't go, don't go into enemy, enemy territory on your own unless God tells you to. If you go on your own, you're going to come back with company that you may not be able to get rid of right away. All right. Another thing you want to do is avoid uh, syncretism. All right, Be cautious about blending elements of other belief systems or religions with your Christian faith. Syncretism can dilute your beliefs and lead to spiritual confusion. And it will. It will. It not can. It will. It can even cause you to fall away from your faith in Christ. You should always seek guidance from church leaders or someone who's been serving the Lord for a lot longer than you and is experienced in this area. If you have questions or concerns about specific practices or beliefs, consult trusted church leaders or spiritual mentors. People you know hear from the Lord. You know, they can, they can provide guidance and help you navigate challenging spiritual issues. You've got to teach your kids. Teach your children. You know, if you're a parent, instill strong Christian values in your children from a young age. Educate them 
about the dangers of occult practices and the importance of a faith-centered life. I have a friend who was telling me about all the witchcraft and alternative lifestyles being taught in their school. And, um, and he's got a, he has a, he has a, a, a son that is um, going to public school. And I said, um, what does your son think about all of this? Now the boy is, I think, 13 or something like that. 12 or 13. And he said, my son came comes home all the time and tells me about this stuff. And uh, my son thinks they're, they're out of their mind. <laughs> so this is some, this is somebody who's taught their kid. Right? The difference between righteousness and unrighteousness. The, the difference of God's ways and the world's ways. So that it's not very easy to blur the lines for this this kid. And he's a kid. Okay? But he comes home and he says, no, they're, they're teaching. You know, like they have a, in some of the schools now, they have a, what's called a, Transgender Day. Where you... Everybody is required, and specifically in this this school that I'm talking about, my friend's school, kid's school. Everyone's required to wear clothes of the opposite sex uh, every Friday or every last Friday of the month. It may be once a month, I think. I don't know, or maybe every month, every week. I'm not sure, but they're, every month they have to. Everyone has to wear clothes of the opposite gender to school for the entire day. And so I asked my friend about that. I said, so. <laughs> What do you think about that? What does he What does he think about that? And he says he refuses to do it, and so he doesn't go to school on that day because he's not going to do it. And if he goes dressed in, you know, the clothes that he should wear, be wearing, you know, that are in line with his gender, um, he'll get sent home anyway. So, and so I asked my friend, well. So what are you going to do about this? Are you going to take him out of school? Are you going to homeschool him or anything like that? And this is what he told me. He said, no. If I take him out of homeschool, I'll hurt him. He needs to be uh, immersed in what's going on out there, but filled with the Spirit of God, though, so that he can know how to navigate all those things. I would, I would destroy him if I was to take him out of that. I would, you know, he wouldn't know how to handle it later on in life. He'd be influenced by all that, all those things. And I thought, man, wow, that's, that's so true. So you got to teach your kids. Okay. Teach them in the way they should go when they grow up. They will not stray from it. That's what the Proverbs say. All right. Another thing too, is always have on your spiritual armor. That's mentioned in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, you know, to protect yourself against spiritual attacks. You need to. You know, in other words, you need to be walking in a consistent relationship with the Lord. Remember that prayer, discernment, uh, the support of your uh, financial community. I mean, not your financial community, the support of your faith community. Uh, they're invaluable. These are invaluable resources. Man, there is wisdom in a multitude of counselors. There is wisdom. That's what the Bible says. Okay. But these are invaluable resources in this journey to stay clear of ideas and spiritual forces arrayed against us. I mean, these are things that are sent to take us out if you are asleep. Okay, right? What does the scripture say? It says in Timothy, you know, be sober, be alert, be sober, be vigilant for the your enemy, your adversary, the devil. He's roaming around like a lion seeking whom he may devour. But you know what? Praise God, he's already won. And he invites us to live in a victorious relationship with him and through him. His grace, his mercy, his spirit, his power, his word. You know, his blood. You, you, we can live victorious. We can, we can overcome all these things. You don't have to be bound by witchcraft. You don't have to, you know, all those kind of things. So let me just pray for you and then. Um, 
Yeah. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, for my brothers and my sisters. Lord, I break every mark of witchcraft off of them right now. Every mark that the devil has placed upon them, demons, witches, warlocks, wizards, sorcerers, necromancers, diviners, every mark, every sign, every sigil that's been placed upon your head, upon your life, your family, I break the power of those marks. I break any altars that have been set up against you. And destroy those altars. Every ritual, every every ceremony, every blood sacrifice, any offerings, any candles, any likenesses being used of you on these altars, I break and destroy these things in the name of Jesus Christ, in Yeshua's mighty name. And I renounce every spell, every incantation, every, all witchcraft, wizardry, sorcery, all black magic voodoo hoodoo all forms of black arts that were written spoken and recorded on any altars against you i break the power of those altars i break the power of those spells and those words in jesus name from off of your life and every demon every devil that was summoned and sent against you i bind those devils i bind the demons and i command them to leave you now in jesus mighty name not in my name but in the name that's above all names, I command every wicked spirit to leave you now in Jesus' mighty name and go back to the dry places where they came from in Yeshua's mighty name. And I bind that spirit of witchcraft that comes against you. I forbid that spirit to operate against you any longer on the job, in the ministry, at the house, um, in your community, wherever it may be. I bind that spirit. I forbid bid that spirit to operate against you i break every yoke off of you i break the chains of witchcraft off of you that are trying to keep you bound i break every ungodly soul tie and spiritual connection that was made between you and witches or warlocks i destroy them and i decree and declare that they have no power over you and that the fruit of their works against you now withers it dies. It falls dead to the ground. It no longer influences you. It no longer influences people against you. It no longer influences your finances or opportunities. No more killing, stealing, and destroying from you. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach's name. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, Father, I pray that you would uh, release a healing virtue right now. Let the, let that virtue, that healing virtue of Jesus Christ flow 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 through every person that's been wounded that has been uh, wounded and bruised by witchcraft attacks thank you for removing every bruise every wound thank you for restoring lives that were um, destroyed by witchcraft thank you for restoring relationships that were destroyed through witchcraft thank you for restoring finances and material things that were taken by witchcraft Thank you for restoring peace and clarity and energy and strength to people that was stolen by witchcraft. And Father, I pray uh, that you would uh, cause all these things to be restored sevenfold by the enemy. And I thank you, Lord, that you hold the people that, that I'm praying over right now, that you hold them high above the plans of the enemy, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, that you will honor them and prepare a place, a, a, a banquet for them in the presence of their enemies. And that with long life, Lord, you will satisfy them and show them your salvation, Lord. God, I thank you for doing this, Lord. Causing the enemy to uh, be a public spectacle again, Lord, on behalf of my brothers and my sisters, Lord. Disarming him in their lives, Lord. For your glory and for your honor and for your praise, I thank you for doing it. Lord, I give you glory and honor and praise, Abba. Thank you for doing that, Lord God. God, I pray that you restore passion, hunger, hunger for your word, passion for a relationship with you. Lord, a, a hunger and a passion, a thirst for your spirit and to drink of your spirit, Lord. I pray that you would restore that to everyone right now. Lord, like never before, Abba, thank you for revival to come to 
to the hearts of those that are listening to this message and to their families, Lord, and all things concerning them. Let revival break out. Let breakthroughs take place now, Abba. And I thank you for doing that for the people, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. God, I give you glory and honor. I praise you, Lord. Thank you so much, God. Thank you so much for doing these things. Let the angels be released, Abba, to war over these prayers, to war over your people. Bring these things to pass, Lord, quickly for your glory and for your honor and for your praise. And I thank you for doing it in Jesus' mighty name. In Yeshua's mighty, mighty name. Amen and amen. All right. Okay, so that was bad company, ruins good morals, wrong associations bring witchcraft attacks. Got to make sure you're properly aligned with the right people and the right groups, guys. These days, it's so important. Amen. Amen. All right. So I hope that message, you know, this message uh, encouraged you. I hope you learned something. I hope I hope you're walking away with some tools in your belt because that was my intention. And please share this with others. Share this with others. Let people know uh, they don't have to they don't have to be poor no more. Is, uh, this is one song I used to hear. You don't have to be poor no more. Jesus is here. So um, you want to you want to make sure that you share this with others, especially those that you know are under a witchcraft attack. And uh, I really appreciate you doing that. Uh, my, my heart is for people to, you know, who are stuck in life to become unstuck. Amen. And uh, thank you for your uh, donations. You guys have been so uh, generous and faithful in, you know, if this message you know, had an impact on you. If this was something that, God, I needed to hear this, this message was just for me. That right there says to you that this message is fertile soil. I'm not telling you to sow to me, but sow into the message, sow into the anointing. And, you know, you will, you will reap a harvest from that. And, um, so you can do that at, um, smashingpillarsinternational.org. Uh, I'm always careful about, you know, I don't like to do long teachings and things like that on giving because I don't want anyone to feel manipulated. <laughs> There's that word, right? I don't want you to feel manipulated to give to me, right? I'm not going to do that. I won't do that. That's why you don't hear a lot of teachings from me on giving. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, I just trust the Lord to move on, on people's hearts. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. I, I can't. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, because uh, you've been a blessing. You really have. You need to know that. You need to know how much I'm, I'm so grateful. And um, so, all right. So with that being said, let me go ahead and uh, what else we got here? All right. I, I guess that's it for now. So one last thing to do. Put your hands up in the air. Close your eyes. Bow your head and close your eyes and receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you rest, give you shalom. Father, thank you for my brothers and my sisters. Lord, I pray that blessing is released to overtake them, Lord, now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, you've been listening to Smashing Pillars here in Houston, Texas. My name is Samuel, and until next time, shalom, shalom.